So now that we've learned some uh, ideas about the Lewis dot structures and the basics, let's practice. By the way, this is Chemistry Videos with Clarissa Sorensen on Room. Woo! I had to do that at the beginning. It's okay though. All right, so let's do some practice with these, okay? So let's do um, some relatively straightforward ones and some that aren't relatively straightforward. Let's do that. Let's do that. Let's do that. And let's do that. And these are ones that we often pick. And the reason why we always pick the same ones is because they really illustrate the point nicely. <laughs> okay. All right. So, in terms of these, let's do these one by one. And I'm going to start with CH4, which seems a little weird, but you'll find out why in a little bit. Okay. So, with CH4, I'm going to count, I'm going to follow my procedure for doing Lewis dot structures. And by the way, if you have a better procedure for doing this that really works for you and you get the right answer every time, do that. This is just the way I do it. So just FYI. Okay, so with C, I'm going to first count up the total number of valence electrons. So let's do that for CH4 and NH3 first. Okay, so for C, I know that that's in group 4A or in group 14, so it has four valence electrons. H is in group 1A, or group, uh, actually just group 1. So I know it has one valence electrons, and there are four H's. So if I add those together, I get eight valence electrons that I have to play with. Right? Now I need to figure out which one is the central atom. The central atom in this case is C. So what a central atom is is exactly what it sounds like. You put it in the center of everything else. So I'm going to arrange the H's around it. Okay, and I'm arranging, notice that I'm arranging them in a certain way. I'm, arra I'm arranging them so that I can have something on the top, right, um, bottom, and left side. Okay, that's why I'm doing it that way, is to reiterate that top, bottom, left, and right sides that I have to this elemental symbol. Okay, and then I fulfill an octet rule for everything that wants an octet while counting up the total number of valence electrons. I also want to fulfill the duet rule if I have any H's or H's that I have to worry about. And in this case, I have H's, right? And so the only thing that I can do to fulfill the duet rule is to bond the H to the C, because it also goes without saying, although I'm going to say it, that if you have a central atom, it better be bonded to everything else around it at least once. Okay, so in this case, I'm going to do a bond between that C and H, between this one, this one, and this one. And now, notice that I use the lines. Remembering back, you have two valence electrons per line. I have used up two, four, six, eight valence electrons. That's how many I have total. I have two that count for the H and two that count for the C in each of the pairs. So I have two around this H, two around that H, two around that H, two around that H, and two, four, six, eight around the C. So this is a great Lewis dot structure, and it's already done. The number of lone pairs in this molecule? Zero. There are no lone pairs in this molecule. And I have four single bonds. And that's it. If you make it harder than it is, don't. <laughs> if you can at all, try it out. Try not to do that. Okay, let's do N for NH, or let's do NH3, ammonia. Okay, for NH3, I'm going to do the total number of valence electrons again. I get five valence electrons from the N, because it's in group 15 or 5A. I get one from each of the H's, and there are three of them, which means I get a grand total of eight valence electrons again. Sneaky. All right, so in this case, Let's figure out what the central atom is. The central atom is N in this case. And you should be seeing a pattern here as well. Like, huh, she always seems to pick the first one in the molecular formula that's not H. And you're right, I'm going to every single time. That works about 95% of the time. You can also pick the most electropositive atom if you know anything about electronegative negativity, it's the opposite direction. Or you can pick the atom that'll make the most bonds. 
which, by the way, means that H will never be a central atom because it only makes one bond. It's not a very good central atom, on all, atom at all. Okay, so in that case, H. I'm looking at the H's here. I arranged the H's around the end. If you did them, you know, here, here, and here, doesn't matter. Totally fine. I'm going to fulfill the duet rule for the H's first while bonding them once to the central atom. I have two, four, six, the last two to make eight to fulfill the octet rule for the N, are a lone pair on the N. Okay? And that's a great Lewis dot structure. It is the bane of beginning, stu uh, beginning chemistry students to create atoms where the, or not create atoms, sorry, create electrons. Sometimes they create atoms too, but create electrons, just draw on electrons until everything has eight or everything that wants two has two and just be like, all right, great, I did it, fantastic. Um, and not count in the end to make sure you have the same number you began with. That actually is critical at this stage for you to count in the end to make sure you have the same number you began with. Just FYI. Okay, let's do SO3. And while we're at it, let's do uh, count up the total number of valence electrons for SO2. All right, so for SO3, S has six valence electrons. S and O are in the same group, actually. Kind of crazy. So they're both in group 16 or 6A. So I get six from the S and six from each of the O's, and there are three of them. So that makes a grand total of 24 valence electrons. Ooh, and I'm squeaky. Let's try this out, okay? All right, so 24 valence electrons for that sucker. Here, I still have six valence electrons from the S, and now I only have two O's, right? They're still in group 16 or 6A, so they still give six valence electrons each, but now I have 18 electrons to work with, okay? All right, we gotta figure out the central atom for each of these. The first element in the formula that's not hydrogen is S. So put that in the center and arrange the O's around it somehow. And I'm going to do O's like this here. Okay. All right, now I want to fulfill the octet rule for everything that wants an octet. Okay. And then I'm going to fulfill the duet rule for anything that wants a duet. Right. So for the H's, I don't have any H's in these structures, so I don't have to worry about the duet rule. I just have to worry about the octet rule. And let's go ahead and fulfill the octet rule for these. I'm going to fulfill the octet rule for the O's first. And you're going to see why I do that over and over again pretty soon here. I fulfill the octet rule for this O. I fulfill the octet rule for this O while bonding it once to the central atom. I had 8, 16, so I knew I had to put two more on the S to get 18, okay? And my question to you would be, is that a good Lewis dot structure? And your answer should be no, <laughs> because S doesn't have enough electrons. It doesn't have eight at this point. It only has two, four, six valence electrons. So what we need to do is we need to share a pair. Okay, when you share a pair, let me do this in green. What that means is you look at something that already has enough electrons. It already has eight and it has lone pairs. So it has to have eight valence electrons already and a lone pair. And what it does is it just puts that lone pair into the bond. Okay, and suddenly I have, actually let's do these draw, draw these with the same colors I just did that we get some continuity in colors here, which I know you guys appreciate. All right, I did not change these, these, that bond, this, 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 this. The only thing I changed is I changed that pair in pink into a bond right here. And then, in fact, allows me to have eight electrons around everything, okay? For those of you who are in general chemistry one, um, in intro chemistry, we tend to not talk about exceptions to the octet rule. So you would stop right there. 
But for general chemistry one, we would go on and say S actually could exceed an octet. So this is actually only one of its many resonance forms that it can have. And we can tell the best resonance form by calculating formal charge. And what you will find is that the best resonance form for S has more symmetry to it than you would expect. Resonance forms, by the way, are equally valid ways of drawing the exact same thing. Okay? In this case, that's the best resonance structure for SO2. Okay? Like I said, if you're an intro, you don't need to know this. But that actually is interesting to kind of make sense. In nature, many things are symmetrical. So that is why this is the best resonance form. We will talk about how to calculate resonance, uh, or how to find resonance structures, and how to calculate formal charge in a future video. So look out for that. Okay, but when you're actually doing this on, an ex on a lab or on an exam, we often want you to draw the best resonance structure if you're in Gen Chem 1 or an organic or whatever. Okay, now for SO3, I'm gonna fulfill the octet rule for everything around the S first. Okay. And that makes 24 valence electrons. So 8 times 3 is 24. Again, S only has 6 valence electrons around it. So that doesn't work. We need to share a pair. So let's share this pair. Right, O already had enough, so I'm going to share that pair. And that would be great for intro. What you'll find in Gen Chem 1 again is that if you do formal charge, the best structure of this, and here I'm doing an overlapping valence, or Lewis dot structure and Vesper structure, kind of showing some geometry, actually has all of the O's double bonded. Okay, again, don't need to know that for intro. But if you have the joint bliss of going on, <laughs> or you're in general chemistry to begin with, then you need to recognize that, okay? What I want you guys to recognize also, if you're looking at a quick moment on these and seeing that they're symmetrical, and that's awesome, you'll also notice that the reason why I fulfill the octet rule for everything around the central atom first is because everything around the central atom always obeys the octet rule or the duet rule in the end. It's only the central atom that violates the octet rule. Here it has 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 valence electrons. Here it has 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 valence electrons. And we can talk about where those extra electrons go and all kinds of things. But again, that's a future conversation. Okay, so an intro, just fulfilling the octet rule is good enough for Gen Chem you need to find the best resonance structure. All right, let's do the last one because we can. All right. Again, you want to make sure you have the same number of valence electrons in the end in your structure that you had in the beginning, and we do in both of these cases. Okay, for the last one, I'm going to count the total number of valence electrons. I have one from the H, four from the Cs, or from the C, I should say, one C, and five from N, which gives me a grand total of 10 valence electrons. My central atom in this case is C. It's the one, first one in the formula that's not H. Okay. And here I'm gonna fulfill the octet rule or the duet rule for everything around the C first. So H can only be bonded to C. I'm gonna bond to N and I get two, four, six, 8, 10. And you say to yourself, is that a good Lewis dot structure? And no, of course it isn't. C only has 2, 4 right now. So 4 valence electrons is not enough. The octet rule was actually made for C because it obeys it so regularly. So I'm not just going to put in one, share one pair. I'm going to share two pairs. And I get H, C, and a triple bond to N. And that is my best structure, okay? I want to make sure I have the same number in the end that I have to begin with, and I do, okay? In this triple bond, I have six shared electrons, and that is 
Awesome. I have one single bond, one triple bond, and one lone pair in that molecule. All right. Until next time, I bid you adieu.